let's apply our definition of formal charge to some other molecules and some other atoms. So let's, let's look at molecules involving oxygen. So let's say I was trying to calculate the formal charge for oxygen in this molecule. And so I want to go ahead and represent these electrons in this bond down here. So formal charge, you first start with the number of valence electrons that that atom normally has. And oxygen being in group six of our organic periodic table, oxygen normally has six, six valence electrons. So from that number, we're going to subtract the number of actual electrons around the atom that we see in our dot structure. So the bond between oxygen and carbon Right, one of those electrons came from carbon and one of those electrons came from oxygen. So oxygen gets one of the electrons in that bond. And then there's six more around it. So there are seven total electrons around oxygen in our molecule. Therefore, six minus seven will give us negative one. So oxygen has a negative one formal charge in this example. And our trend will be, right, whenever you see oxygen with, uh, with one bond and three lone pairs of electrons, uh, you know it has a negative one formal charge. Let's do another one involving oxygen. So let's, let's look at this molecule right here. So now we have a double bond between oxygen and carbon. And I know that each one of those bonds in my double bonds consists of two electrons. So I will go like that. So once again, oxygen normally has six valence electrons around it. Let's see how many valence electrons it has around it in this case. Well, in the double bond, right, oxygen gets one electron from each one of those bonds, and then it has two lone pairs of electrons around it. So it has six electrons around it in this instance, so six minus six will give me zero. So oxygen has a formal charge of zero in this example and whenever you see two bonds to oxygen with two lone pairs of electrons right you should think to yourself that has a formal charge of zero and remember that just comes with practice let's do another one let's do oxygen double bonded to carbon again but this time we're going to put a hydrogen on our oxygen and again let's represent all of our electrons right so put our electrons in this double bond here, and then we'll put our electrons in this single bond. And oxygen normally has six valence electrons around it. And in this example, it's gonna get one from each of these bonds, and then it has one lone pair around it like that. So it has five electrons around it. So six minus five will give us a plus one formal charge. So oxygen is positively charged in this dot structure. And again, the pattern, the pattern, whenever oxygen is bonded to, to uh, at, whenever oxygen has three bonds and <clears throat> one lone pair of electrons, it's going to have a formal charge of plus one. All right, let's, let's look at an example where they give us the formal charge, but they don't give us the number of valence electrons, right? So let's see if we can figure out how many valence electrons surround my oxygen if they give me that this oxygen is positively charged. So remember, organic chemists would rather draw uh, formal charges than draw lone pairs of electrons. So it's your task to figure out how many lone pairs of electrons are on that oxygen. And in the last video, we talked about two ways to do this, right? The first way, was kind of the fast way. And we said, oh, well, oxygen, being in the second period, must follow the octet rule. It must have eight electrons around it. And here it has only, only six electrons around it, so it needs two more. So we can put one lone pair of electrons. And that's our situation where we have three bonds to oxygen and uh, one lone pair of electrons. So we know that's going to be a formal charge of plus one. And you can, of course, calculate real fast and double check that. So that's, that's our fast way of, do, of doing it. The other way of doing it, equally valid, would be to say, all right, well, let me just start off the same way here. Let me just draw out my oxygen with my hydrogens. But this time, I'm going to actually put in my electrons, right? So let me just draw in my electrons in these bonds here. And I think to myself, oxygen, oxygen normally has six valence electrons, right? So normally has six electrons. Um, if it has a positive charge, that must mean it lost one of its electrons. So instead of six electrons, now it has only five electrons. All right, so only, only five electrons around it. How many electrons does oxygen have around it in this example? 
Well, it gets one from each of these bonds, so it has only three electrons in this example. So it has only three, it needs five, so it needs one lone pair of electrons. So we can go ahead and put our one lone pair of electrons on it like that, giving it a plus one formal charge. So two ways to do the same thing, uh, two ways of figuring out how many lone pairs of electrons are on that oxygen. Let's do, let's do um, a halogen. Right, let's do uh, a formal charge for a halogen. I'm just going to pick chlorine here. So, so chlorine is a halogen, right? And uh, you'll see a lot of mechanisms in organic chemistry where halogens are surrounded by eight electrons. So what is the formal charge on this halogen? Well, chlorine is in group seven of our organic periodic table. Therefore, it should normally have seven valence electrons around it. Let's see how many we have in this case, right? Well, there's, there's obviously eight, right? Four pairs of two, so there are eight electrons surrounding my chlorine. So seven is how many it normally has. Eight is how many it has in this dot structure. So it has a formal charge of negative one. So chlorine is negatively charged. And when halogens have a negative formal charge, they are relatively stable. They just gain an electron, so they are like a noble gas. So halogens are very electronegative. They are able to support negative charges fairly easily. All right, let's do, let's do one more example. So one big example, which involves a lot of the atoms that we've talked about um, for drawing formal charges. So let's, let's draw the dot structure for a molecule called nitromethane, all right? So methane implies one carbon, all right? So let's go ahead and draw our one carbon. And normally methane has, has four bonds to hydrogen, right? But in this case, it's only gonna have three bonds to hydrogen. And that fourth bond uh, will be a nitro group, right? So carbon bonded to a nitrogen, and a nitro group is a nitrogen double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to another oxygen. So that is our setup here. That's our nitromethane molecule. All right, if we're gonna calculate formal charges, let's go ahead and put in all of our electrons on these bonds here, right? So filling in all of these electrons will make it easier for us to calculate formal charges on these atoms. And let's, let's go ahead and calculate the formal charge on every atom, for every atom in nitromethane to sum up what we've learned about formal charges. So let's start with, let's start with carbon, All right? So my carbon atom in the center there, carbon normally has four valence electrons. Let's see how many electrons it has in this example, All right? Well, obviously it has four. So four minus four is equal to zero. So carbon has zero formal charge for this example. What about hydrogen, right? So if I'm trying to find the formal charge on hydrogen, hydrogen is in group one of our periodic table. So normally hydrogen has one electron around it. Let's see how many electrons it has in this case. Obviously it has only one. So one minus one would give me zero. And that's the same for all of my hydrogens. So there's zero formal charge for these hydrogens here. What about, what about if I wanted to find the formal charge for nitrogen, right? So if I want to find the formal charge for nitrogen next, right? I know that nitrogen is in group five of my periodic table. So it normally has five valence electrons. Let's see how many electrons does nitrogen have in this case? Well, I see only four, right? So only four. So five minus four would give me a plus one formal charge. So nitrogen is going to end up with a plus one formal charge, all right? So it's positively charged. Let's do the top oxygen next, all right? So let's focus in on this oxygen up here. And I see, I see six valence electrons around that oxygen. So for my, my top oxygen, oxygen normally has six valence electrons, and there are six electrons surrounding that oxygen. So six minus six will give me zero. So that top oxygen has a formal charge of zero. What about, what about the bottom oxygen here, right? What about this guy? Well, I see seven electrons surrounding oxygen 
um, in, in, in the bottom one. So, so that would be for my bottom oxygen, right? Normally six. This time I see seven electrons. So six minus seven would give me a negative one formal charge. So oxygen has a negative one formal charge in this example. All right, so we've, we've calculated formal charges for all of the atoms in this molecule. So a, a, a chemist would probably shorten this up a little bit. They wouldn't, they wouldn't draw out all of this stuff. They would say, okay, well, I have a, a CH3A methyl group here. And then coming off of that carbon, I have a nitrogen double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to another oxygen. And I know this, this nitrogen is, posi is positively charged. I know this oxygen is negatively charged. So uh, these two structures contain the same information, right? But this, this way on, 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 the, on the right is a little bit faster way of drawing a dot structure for nitromethyl. Thing. So that, that sums up formal charge. You need to do a lot of practice on formal charge um, if, you're, if you want to learn how to do organic chemistry mechanisms.